<clears throat> Thank you, Trisha. I, I'll tell you how far the man has come. He's 22 years old now. I remember him when he was like 14, 15 years old out here doing it. Good to see you this morning. I see you as well. Davis is like one of the legends of the sport right now. And here we are back with the Mountain Games. What does it mean for you as a slackliner to have this event right here in your hometown? Uh, I mean, in simple words, it's special. Um, it's really cool to see like the full circle that's happened because here at GoPro Games is the first place that I saw slacklining. Um, so this event is what exposed me to the sport. Interesting. Um, like you had not slacklined until you saw it here. Yeah, I'd never even seen it. I didn't know what it was. I had a bunch of friends that kept telling me like, dude, you got to come see this slackline stuff. You got to come see it. You got to come see it. And then finally I saw them just before they were taken down the line at Solaris Plaza. And uh, I just needed to see it for 10 seconds before I was like, I, I need to do that. I say that because my kids saw it here. They're a few years younger than you. And I actually bought them the Slackline kit from here. And they started getting into it. But you've taken it all the way. And before we talk more, let's just bring up any sample of B-roll that you have out there, Emma, of where Davis is at with this sport now. And you can take us through this. Where is this? This is in uh, Fisher Towers. It's right outside of Moab, Utah. Um, this is definitely one of the more scenic lines or the most scenic line I've ever done. Look at you! How high uh, up in the air are you right there? I think direct exposure, which means straight down to the ground, it's 800 feet or so, oh if I remember gosh. correctly. But yeah, then it's, it, obviously it's very exposed in all directions and it's really cool looking at a tower like that because uh, I don't know, it's like almost too much to take in. I, I, I mean, looking at the drone footage of this is one thing. To actually be there, I've, I've been to the tower. I've never climbed it. I mean, I've stood there and, and seen this. Uh, how do you even set this line up? So every line's different. You have to get creative. Uh, for this one, we use a drone. So you'll tie like a piece of paracord to the drone, fly the drone across, and now you have paracord across. You tie the line to the end of the paracord, and then you pull in the, the line from the that, other side. That is amazing. When was that footage? That was last fall. Oh. It's going to get a little bit loud right here. Uh, to all of our viewers at home and abroad. Uh, they're getting things set up out here. Good morning, good to see you. Uh, they're getting everything set up for the races down here. It is a busy time. It's gotta be amazing. It's one thing when you're out there on the tower and there's no one around, you're gonna be performing right here and there's like 500 people at any given time standing there watching. It's, uh, it's different, it's a different environment for sure. I would say, honestly, it's a, it's a little easier. Um, or more mellow just because that exposure, at least at that level, yeah. the Fisher Towers is just something that like your brain can't really comprehend. And at least with like people watching you and a smaller line such as this one, you can at least like understand what's going on. And I like watching you down here. And again, they'll literally set the line up right here uh, onto the International Bridge and people can stand there. I also like the fact, I mean, there's gonna be young adults, kids like yourself once were, seeing slacklining for the first time what do you have to say to people or kids that are thinking about getting into this uh if it calls your name get after it it's not something that's easy and that you're just going to pick up and be like oh i can do this um it's not like that for anyone but it really is a game of time and if it's something that you want to do you really need to put in the commitment of just like i'm going to go do this and sometimes that means going to the park by yourself sometimes that means having like that drive to go actually do it. So yeah. I just encourage anyone that really feels like they're interested in it to really give it the chance to go try it. And come down and look for the guy with the really cool mustache. He'll help you out on that. Look at this line. Where's this one? Uh, this is right outside of Zion. Oh man. Um, Have you ever, like, it's right outside of the park. Look at that, but what is that called? That trick was called a, a double can of soup. And then the second was an almighty. Uh, I know really funny names, but that's how our sport works, is uh, <laughs> whoever lands the trick first is who gets to name it. So that I guess whoever so landed cool. this one first is actually my buddy Justin, but he must have been feeling hungry. Yeah, well that's just like kayaking, you know, yeah. like there's there's McNasties, um, you know, just funny names for things Probably. like that. Same this, skateboarding. This is so awesome to see you do this and to see how far you've taken it. And I know you've got quite a few friends that are going to be here for it. Who are some of your other favorite people to slackline with? Uh, Mickey Wilson and Heather Larson will be here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I've known both of them for 10 years now. Um, both of them are huge figures in the sport. Because it's such like a, a new thing, 
uh, they've played a huge role in helping it grow and exposing it to new people. And um, Mickey, Mickey, by the way, is the guy that, he's the slackliner that climbed down on the chairlift line and rescued someone yes. that was literally hanging. He was on Ellen. I mean, he took his slackline skills and actually saved somebody's life with it. <laughs> Davis, good job. Thank I want to. I want to bring up one more clip. I think we have one more, Emma. I mean, I, I can't get enough of this. Let's bring up one more uh, before we go. Look at this shot. And and I'd also like to add, no pads underneath, but you are secured into the line with a harness. Yeah, you are harnessed in. It's actually something that is really safe. I know it looks dangerous, um, but everything is redundant. There's two of everything. It's a really safe sport. Well, and here's the moment. You're going to appreciate this. You probably grew up watching her. Trisha Swenson. She's going to magically appear right there. See, there she is. Oh, my goodness. You probably know Trisha. Okay. Trisha, I know you must have a question for Davis. Okay. You know what, Davis? What I want to ask you is, um, you know, you know, and can you know this? Like, if you're kayaking with people, you want to kayak with people that know. You want to, you know, backcountry ski with people that know what's going on. When, when you're t tethering, you know, putting together those lines across something like Fisher Towers, like, you got to really trust the people that are securing them, you know, like that. Because, you know, is there a lot of mathematical things that go in? Like, how do you know exactly, like, how much tension to put on? And uh, maybe you've never been up to the top of Fisher Towers. Like, how do you know how to secure these lines? So, I don't know, so they don't fall off or something. <laughs> or totally. That uh, no, that's a really, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, there's a lot of trust involved uh, is the first thing. Everyone that I go out with uh, are with my life um, without question. Uh, and I think that's something that is also really special about the community is similar to kayaking and whatever other sport that's similar is uh, you go out with people that you trust with your life and that really uh, creates a, a special bond between like you and your partners that you're going out with. But uh, as far as how you know if it's safe, it's, uh, it's a lot of trust in your gear and a lot of experience with rigging. So you always want to go out, especially like highlining for your first time with people that know what they're doing and know how to rig and can teach you the, the proper ways. It's similar to climbing. So you'll go with someone that, uh, that can teach you the proper ways to go about things. And that's back to the safety is uh, it is really safe as long as you know what you're doing and do it properly. And that is just uh, something that goes through or comes through experience and uh, going with the right people that will show you how to do it. I will hey. never look at Fisher. I'll never see Fisher Towers the same way, Trisha I Swenson. Know, I that, know. And, and as we do wrap this up, I wanted to say, I was like, Davis, are you doing the kayak race today? Because I thought he was kayaking. He goes, no, man, kayaking kind of scares me. <laughs> I was like, what? I, oh, come on, man. Gosh. Away. All right, well, oh Trisha, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. Davis, good luck this weekend. Um, I'll be around to close the show here, show you a few things, but I'll send it back to you guys over there at the Grand Hyatt. Okay. Hey, Davis, uh, have fun this weekend. Um, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for doing the Slackline shows, and I hope you inspire the next generation.